everyone, welcome to my craft table. My name is Rachel Daly, if you are new to my channel. In this video, we have some fun Valentine's Day crafts. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And oh, also, be sure to stay to the very end because I have something so exciting to share. I'm really looking forward to creating this craft. So, but before we do, let's go ahead and get some of the crafts out of the way. Now, I had purchased this from Hobby Lobby. Um, shocker, right? If you guys have been around my channel enough, you guys know that I shop there all the time. And I love getting their... Um, their clearance crafts um, and making them my own. So this was 10 bucks and I got it for 224. This was not part of their Valentine's Day collection. Um, they just actually just put that out not too long ago, but this was part of their everyday home decor, which I was really surprised to see. I thought this was a cute Valentine's Day craft. And of course, on its own, it's super adorable. And I don't want it to deter away from this little pendant here. Um, but you know what? I need to just add a little bit of vinyl, right? Because we've got to vinyl all this stuff. So I just thought it'd be really cute to, and I'm using a removable vinyl because I may want to take it off and add something else to it. And so I don't want to cause a lot of sticking issues. So of course you can still use permanent vinyl and then try to take it off. It's not a big deal, but I just like to, I don't know, make it easier on myself. So I just found that was my mini press. It's heating up for a different project that we'll be working on here after we get done with this project. We actually got mixed media in this video, meaning I got um, iron-on and iron-on mixed with um, regular vinyl. So I got a lot of different types of projects going on, um, going on in this video. And again, I'm really excited to share with you guys the last project. I saw it on Pinterest and I thought, oh, I gotta recreate this and make it my own. So that is what we will be doing. And it'd be really cute. I'm gonna put you guys in the suspense, but it'd be really cute for a eye doctor's office. Just, some, you know, throwing that out there. I, of course, not have any association with any eye doctor. However, I still thought, nonetheless, it's super cute and I gotta try it. And I've never done it before, so we are going to work on it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and place some transfer tape onto my vinyl. And there we go. Had a little bit of a bubble. And then we'll flip that to the back. Okay. And I thought this is just super adorable and it won't take away from that. And I'm just gonna put it in the lower right corner. And let me see if I can get this straight. Let's take a look at it. Perfect. Okay, there we go. Oop. Is that better? Or is that get on there better? There we go. Now I know that it might be a little bit hard to see on camera, but in person it's a little bit darker, and I like how that it's just you know it's there, but it's not as strong. I maybe if I were to redo this, this, which I could, I, this could easily come off. I might go a darker pink, but I think for right now, I really like it. And if I think that it's just not as noticeable and it's just not popping, then I'll switch it out. But for right now, I think this is really cute. This next project, I'm going to do another iron on, and this is going to be that same puff, um, super 3D puff iron on from that same company I've used in the past. I've used their metallic colors. I've used their metal it was metallic gold in another project. And then in another project I used their white 3D puff. And in this one I am going to be using their pink 
um, super puff iron on. So I'm really excited to try that out. If you do try this out, just remember when you're doing the design, you want to mirror it and put shiny side up, shiny side up. It's different from normal HTV where you have to put shiny side down. This one, they call for shiny side up when you're cutting it. So just bear that in mind when you are um, using their product. Now, I haven't been really impressed, but I do want to try all of the products that I had purchased from them. So that is what I'm going to do. Blend roll this and then I'm gonna put the tag in there because I don't go by the tag to find the center because the tag is not always going to be centered within the shirt. And that was my heat press. Now, they do recommend they said 280 works best for them. In fact, I think I'm going to try 280 because I thought maybe 290 was too much for the last project, and maybe that's why it didn't. Um, super puff up but and I'm going to preheat my shirt just to remove any of the moisture okay that's telling me that it's cool down to 280 and then I'm going to find where center now I'm doing tone on tone I really like doing that so that is what I'm going to do for this project <clears throat> now this one I obviously didn't have to mirror just because it's a heart, so it doesn't matter if it's, it's the same thing. It's symmetrical. Okay, I think that's good. And then, so they say, in those instructions, it says 275 for 10 seconds, but they said 280 works best for, works best. So I don't know why they don't just recommend that. But of course, they give you test strips and all that. So, all right, so we're gonna put a lot of pressure on here. The, the more pressure, the better. Okay, and then they want you to remove the liner on hot. So, and there we go. Well, I have to say, um, I absolutely love it, guys. So, okay, that is trial and error, right? Because if I bring in, I don't have the other shirt with me, or I'd bring that in, but um, I think 280 with a lot of pressure is best. I did 290 in a previous shirt in the previous video, and I think that was a little bit too much um, heat. And then um, the other one, I did 275, and I don't think that was enough heat. So the sweet spot is 280, but I I really encourage you to try. And then a, extreme pressure. I put a lot of pressure in there. That's why I kind of stopped talking because I was focusing on all the pressure that I was doing for it. But, um, but anyways, so yeah, I think that 280 with for 10 seconds is going to be just perfect. And I really like that. I'm really loving the, the pink with the shirt. I think that's really pretty. So anyways, so yeah, um, that's what I would recommend. But they, again, they have test pieces so or test strips. Make sure you test on an old shirt that you no longer wear that's similar to the shirt that you're applying it to or, you know, your garment, whatever you're putting, putting your, your puff vinyl on. And then test it out before you just follow what I'm telling you, just because my heat press, that's it, that's what works best. And if you're using a different machine and it could be a different, you know, you know how every machine is different. So just always test yours out. In this project, I had mentioned this in a previous video and I thought that this would be super cute if you worked for an eye doctor or you are an eye doctor. Um, I thought this would be really cute for the office, um, but you'll understand why here in a moment. And even though, um, you know, that's just not my line of work, I still thought it was cute. And again, this was Pinterest inspired, um, so not my original idea, but I thought I would try to create it as my own and give it a spin. So what I'll do is I'm trying to weed this out and it's looking like it's giving me a little bit of an issue. So I'm just trying to find an approach that's going to make sense to weeding this out. I had mentioned quite a few times um, in my... <clears throat> uh Christmas videos 
that I bought a bunch of this Oracle uh, 651 vinyl, and I know people swear by it, but I just cannot find, I cannot seem to find an Oracle that actually cuts well. And I just replaced my blade, and I thought that was one of my problems, that my blade was getting old, but sometimes it can be so cheap and not wanting to replace it and just kind of preserve and deal with it. But so I replaced it when I cut this and I think that that's still not resolving the issue. Um, so I'm not exactly sure if I just happened to get a bad batch of the vinyl, but I bought a lot and I'm having a hard time understanding how can all of them be bad? I can see maybe having an older vinyl or, um, you know, just one batch being bad, but all of them being bad, I find that very hard to believe. I'll have to come back and fix that. But anyways, um, I've complained a lot in the Christmas season about how I was excited to work for it. Cause like I said, people swear by it, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and then I've been having nothing but issues. I think what I'll have to do, since I have upcoming smaller texts to deal with, I'm going to have to go ahead and cut this apart just to kind of make it easier, which is fine because um, I wasn't exactly sure how this was all going to line out or line up anyways. And um, just speak, you'll understand why here in a moment. So I'm excited to to really share that with you guys. I'm going to go ahead and get out some transfer tape and reverse weed this. I think it's going to be easier to, to reverse weed this than it is to trying to weed it on the uh, backer here. So if you've never done reverse weeding, I typically do it. I don't do it often, but when I, I do reverse weeding, I, I typically do it when I'm having an issue with vinyl, that's just when you're weeding and it's just not the parts that needs to stay on the vinyl. It's just not, um, it's just not staying on the back or that. Yeah. That's not staying on the backer. I just do reverse weeding just to make my life a little bit easier. It's not my favorite part about, um, or favorite part of weeding doing it this way, just because I think it's a little bit harder, but, um, it, I think it's a less aggravating sometimes not all the time so you just want to burnish it like you would um as if you're trying to transfer the uh the weeded vinyl and then what you're going to do is you're going to peel the backer off and then hopefully the whole thing sticks on the transfer tape so then once you've done that what you're going to do is you're going to lift the part that you need to weed out lift that up and then hopefully your letters stay on the transfer tape so and you can imagine this gets a little hard to try to pull off so you want to be careful and then plus you want to be careful that your fingers are not accidentally lifting the other parts again this is not my favorite form of weeding but it's it's definitely a lot easier so give it a try I mean I'm sure there's a lot of people that absolutely swears by this but like I said I prefer not to but if it saves my sanity then I'm gonna go ahead and do what I can right so um that's what I'll do all right get that off just so sticky and then I'm gonna get this part off all right that worked out pretty good now I have to get the middles out which sometimes is the easiest part sometimes it can be the difficult part so let me go ahead and do that Let me know what holiday, I think I've already asked this in a, in a Christmas one, but let me know what season or holiday you like to craft for. And also in the comment section, let me know, you know, what type of craft would you love to see on my craft table? Um, I really like doing fall 
or fall, full, faux foods, excuse me. Um, but it doesn't seem to be really popular, so I have not been doing it too much, but I plan on doing a little bit more of faux foods coming up for spring and summer because there's a lot of opportunity there. And I know there's a lot of opportunity for Valentine's Day, but the schedule's just not gonna allow it. But um, if there's anything else you'd like me to show you guys, then I'd be more than happy to. Right. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, um, I had purchased these reading glasses at the Dollar Tree, okay? And the idea is, it says, I only have eyes for, well, this is this is not in order because I got to cut it apart uh, for you because it's going to be four and then you here. I almost freaked out. I'm like, oh my God, did I get this backwards? But yeah, I just got to cut it out. So the reason why I had I did them separately because I wasn't sure, I kind of got an idea as to my measurements, but I wasn't sure, you know, where about this was going to go. So this is why I had to cut everything separately in this in the spacing wise so as you can see why this kind of looks like and i i made the text larger and smaller as it gradually went down and now you can see why this would be a cute idea for you know um an eye specialist um like the name the proper name of the eye doctor it's just escaping me i'm sure someone will put that in the comment section that would be greatly appreciated first of all i want it centered but i also need an idea about where the words are gonna go and also if it's straight. Go ahead and add my hot glue. Yeah, we're almost out. And then I think that just needs to get, oh, that, that pulled off very quickly. Oh no. This is why I don't like working with hot glue. <laughs> you don't have a lot of time. Okay. I'm just going to hold it up just to kind of get an idea, make sure that's good. And again, I, there's a reason why I'm having it so low. Oh, and also, before I forget, um, it doesn't have a lot of stability. So this is not something I would want to move around too much. But just because it's flimsy a little bit, because you only got the support right here. Um... I also got this plaque from Hobby Lobby. It's an eight by 10 in their wood pile section. Okay, so that's good. And then I think what I'll do next is I'll cut these apart. And then I'm gonna put this underneath here and I'm gonna have to trim this up a little bit blur. So we got it. Now, the tricky part is, is burnishing this down. I'm sure there's probably an easier way. In fact, I think I was able to move this. Okay, that's fine. I can move it back. Now I could use my beacon fabric tack glue and I was gonna use it for this, but I thought that this would be a lot quicker. Okay. Oh, I think that's super adorable. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Okay. Um, all right. So then let's see here. I'm just going to place this out a little bit just so I can get an idea about, you know, spatial wise is concerned. Okay. So what I'll do is do we want to start at, <coughs> kind of want to start, excuse me, I want to start the bottom here. This one's a little bit tricky, I'll be honest, because of trying to align everything. And I'm going to do a little bit more than I really need, because um, I think that will help me center. I know I say less is better with transfer tape, but sometimes, I don't know, those small piece, narrow pieces, they, they give me a struggle. Um, so go ahead and do that. So we got new lights in my craft room. And unfortunately, this glass mat, we cannot avoid either seeing my reflection, and I'm sure no one wants to see my face while we're crafting. And um, also you can see the lights and the reflection. So just because of the setup I have, without trying to do too much 
to my dining room slash craft room. So unfortunately, we're going to have to go back to this mat, but I ordered a lighter mat. It's a Cricut brand. It's a blue mat. So it's not blue. I think it's like a, oh gosh, it is the one I, yeah, it's a light blue. It's, I have it in this size and I just needed a bigger one. So anyways, you guys have seen it before. I was hoping not to have to have any mats and just use my um, glass mat, but just because of how everything is just laid out, that's unfortunate, but it is all right. I had scratch up. I like this glass mat because you can use in the magnets, which it works through these mats just fine. Um, but this does scratch. The mat does, the glass mat does scratch very easily. And they say that, you know, it's scratch resistant. It's not scratch proof, which is fine. But I, if I could go back, I probably would have never spent the money on it. Um, and use a better system with the magnets because it's a lot of my, these glass mats are a lot of money and um, unfortunately it is what it is but so that's kind of where we're at so I'm waiting for that one mat to come in to overlay it while I'm recording so now what I'm going to do is to I'm going to go ahead and get this centered and straight now, you notice when I put that down, I didn't put a lot of pressure. That will give me an opportunity. Not all vinyl will allow you to do that. Um, I think I have it going crooked. Um, sometimes once you put it on your surface, it, it will adhere. And gosh, watch this will adhere. Um, but I think because this is a painted surface, I usually have a little bit more wiggle room. So you honestly just, you got to, you got to know your, your surfaces because Something like this is a painted texture. It's chalk paint. It's actually, I have it. This is my favorite one. It is um, from Hobby Lobby. And Michaels also carries it, and so does Amazon. But um, because it's a textured surface, sometimes you have a lot of, and this is Paper Studio vinyl, so you have a lot of wiggle room. So you, as long as you put it down lightly, it won't adhere really well. Now, don't come back and get mad at me if it does. But typically, I have more wiggle room if I'm careful. And um, now I could opt to use vinyl or um, HTV for this and I would be able to work on it a little bit better. But I think, I don't know, it's just the one I want to go for. Okay, so that's cute, right? <laughs> absolutely loved how this turned out. So I think what we'll do, we'll turn this around and we will add this and then it will offset the, um, you know, the idea of me wanting to add the uh, twine around here. So I thought this would be really cute. I okay. think this turned out perfect. I absolutely love how this all turned out. And I think, again, this would be super cute if you are an eye doctor or work in a doctor's office and I think this would be a cute little Valentine's Day gift especially if your spouse it works in one as well and it's really easy to make just buy glasses from the Dollar Tree or Dollar General and then this you can buy any black but this is from Hobby Lobby painted it white I take, think it took two coats and then add some vinyl and then of course adding the hearts is completely optional but I like that just because it kind of it just needs a little something so all right I really love this the first one that we're going to work on is this cute little towel that I got from Hobby Lobby and um to be completely honest I had purchased this I'm just bringing in my heat mat here I had purchased this um a uh, towel for quite some time and I, I was actually just gonna just display it as is and not do anything to it but crafted by Lainey um her channel YouTube channel she's a she does cards and 
Cricut crafts just like I do and she did something super cute with this heart so I got inspired so I want to give credit to her in her channel so be sure to check her out so um again I got this at Hobby Lobby um I just found or I just found a font that I liked and I just put my husband's and I's initial and I'm just going to iron it on. Now she did something a little different, which was super adorable. So again, be sure to watch her video. Um, but I thought it'd be cute to add my husband's and I's um, initials to the heart. So I'm going to go ahead and I already lint rolled it earlier. Probably should do it one more time, but I think it should be all right. And it's going to focus on this heart here. And I liked how different it was. It's black and white. It's not your typical style for Valentine's Day. So I like to look it that it's a little bit different. And again, I just found a font that I liked with this. And I go ahead and get this centered and straight as possible. So I'm going to hold it up just to verify that it looks good. And I think it does. Okay. So this is an easy iron on project. So if you're a beginner, this would be a great first project. And um, again, you just have a little bit, you just have two letters and the ampersand, and then you're good to go. And then you just got to iron it on. I like to use a mini press and this is glitter cart um, iron on. So you use the medium setting and then it's supposed to be moved constantly for 30 seconds your easy mini press is not meant to stay in one spot so you want to constantly move it and I just realized there's another heart there I don't know why I didn't see that well that's all right I only you need you're only going to see one side so I think that's good and what I'll do is remove it from my heat mat because it does retain all that heat and I'm just going to go ahead and now this is just going to be for decorative purposes only just because I added that vinyl and that's cool enough. It's going to peel that back up and there you go. Oh, I love it. And I think that the glitter really does add um, some value to the initials, I think, in my opinion. And it just almost looks like it came like that, right? So again, just find a font that you really like and... Then just add your initials. I didn't do anything fancy. Just found a font that I liked. And then add a little ampersand. And then called it a day. So that is how that turned out. And it's just going to be displayed in my kitchen. And yeah, I really like that. And I don't know how well the glitter is coming off. I forget what. I know it's from Hobby Lobby. So it's Paper Studio brand. Or you know, it could be Cricut brand. But it's the iridescent glitter that's um, on this because there's different types of white glitter. There's like a silver glitter and then there's like a grayscale glitter and there's an iridescent. And this is the iridescent one. So just kind of be mindful when you're picking out a white glitter. Just make sure you see what type of like what type of like it's white vinyl. But the glitter is what I'm talking about. So just make sure that you pay attention uh, to that. All right, let's go ahead and get into our last craft of the video. In the last craft, we have this amazing wood round. I had purchased this from Hobby Lobby and it came into this um, natural wood color, although it's a little bit prettier than this size, an MDF board really. And I decided to paint um, the wood round with two coats of the white chalk paint that you've seen in previous projects. So I will move that over here just to get it out of my way because we have a really large, um, craft or a large area that we need to weed out. So I just use the Cricut Brands Gold um, Foil and I also use Cricut Brands um, Glitter Iron-On. So just be, just make sure that when you're doing this that you do it uh, mirrored. And this is their Smart Vinyl. And I opted for this just because of the scale of it. And I really wanted to bring in gold. Now, I'm not too sure how I'm going to like it with the, the um, 
glitter iron on but in the spirit of this year of shopping my craft space and not mine and using what I need I need to use up my glitter iron on now I really really wanted to go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and purchase this uh, pink glitter iron on but because I don't have any here I ran out of course but again, my whole thing this year is to shop with what I have. And so that's why I opted for that one. And the reason why I want to do glitter is because this is going to be a wood round for my front door. And our house faces the west. And every time that sun sets, it just creates such a beautiful shimmer um, from the street. So that is why I wanted to do glitter. You'll see in this project that some of the hearts and the stars, some are in glitter and some is in that gold. They actually, the drawing or the SVG, oops, um, the drawing, I can't be saying drawing, I'm sorry. The uh, SVG had them in several different colors and I just didn't feel like, I really didn't want to uh, have too many colors just because I feel like the glitter glitter alone is a lot to for one's eye so that is why I just kind of kept it just the gold in this really pretty pink color now of course you can you know you can do whatever you can do it all one color do it several colors whatever suits your preference then you do you right What's great about crafting is what one person can see it, it one way, another person can see it visually differently. Now that I have that all weeded out, what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, figure out the position of everything just so I can get an idea of where everything goes. I had to, just because of <clears throat> the size of my vinyl, um, I had to cut these in pieces. So this is going to be a little bit of a puzzle, if you will. So I got four different pieces and let's, and also just as earlier as mentioning that because of size wise, I had to make it a little bit smaller than my wood round. So I'm trying to remember how much smaller it is. And by just kind of, again, figuring out where center is and then um, placing it from there. So again, I'm just trying to get an idea. Now I may have to adjust this and I'm paying attention to where my little hanger is. Now worst case scenario, if for whatever reason I happen to get off centered, which you guys know me, sometimes that happens and that's all right. But um, if I were to get off centered a little bit, I can just go ahead and undo that little string and then go ahead and reapply that. So <clears throat> right now, obviously I'm going to have to, given that this is layered, I will not be able to leave everything exactly down in position only because I don't want my vinyl to iron on to the carrier sheet. So this is just simply for placement purposes and making sure 
that I have everything where I need to go. Um, so I'm not worried about how straight it is at this point, just making sure uh, positioning wise it makes sense for this wood round so this is what it says it just says cupid stop here and i really liked how that turned out but I, I think that looks good and when i do these projects i like to use my um easy mini press and i like to quickly go over all of it because when you only focus on one area the other side tends to bubble up a little bit and then you you could lose your space so I just, I opt for just kind of going over it real quickly and then start focusing on my areas from right to left or left to right, just kind of depending on the approach I'm taking with my design. And the reason also why I'm choosing not to use a bigger um, heat press is because I don't want to accidentally, accidentally have my press touch my paint. Now you most certainly can use um you can use parchment paper or a teflon sheet to protect your blank and a lot of times i do but because this is such a large piece i figured that i could just use this carrier sheet and it should be good to go all right so i'm gonna let that cool down this is cool enough to touch it's still a little warm so I'm going to be very careful to peel this up especially I don't want the this to peel up my paint so I'm going to I'm noticing some areas here so I'm going to hit my heat press with that again and what I like about the mini press is you can do focus press so if I have an area where you know just one area is just not sticking then I like to go ahead and Pull my, put my mini press on there and focus on that area. With the larger one, then it, over, it starts heating everything else and then you're overheating it. And again, I'm going slow and I'm monitoring. Oops, so I have one area. Got to be careful with how this is going to get laid down. Okay, there we go. That one area, see how I can do a focus press? I think that's good. So I'm going to let this cool down. Multitasking at its best, right? So I'm going to start to peel this back. It's a little bit warm. So I'm going to slow way down just to make sure that I don't accidentally peel any of that up. All Going slowly, making sure, there we go. Perfect. All right. Now I'm just going to place this here just to get an idea. And then I'm going to go ahead and get this on here again. Not, I'm not going to iron this part down, but I just need an idea of where it's going. Right. That's perfect. So I'm going to peel that back up. And then I got this really close to the line. It's going to protect it. You don't want to accidentally heat up your, um, your vinyl that you already have ironed on. So, all right, let's go ahead and see if this is ready to be lifted. Okay, so far so good, but again, slowly, make sure we're looking at everything. I think that looks good. So I'm gonna commit, and again, I'm gonna protect my surface of my paint, but also my vinyl, and I'm just gonna go ahead and iron this all down. Awesome. So now you can kind of see why I'm not adding any bows to this, just because there's enough going on here at the top that I figured it would take away from that. So of course, if you prefer to add a bow to your wood round, then by all means go for it. But I think this just turned out as beautiful as it can be without the bow. But again, you do whatever you would like. Okay, well, this is all I have for you in today's Valentine's Day video. I hope that I was able to inspire you in some way, shape, or format, and be sure to hit that notification, and of course, if you are not subscribed to my channel, be sure you do, because I have a few more Valentine's Day videos coming to my channel, so especially with the daily challenge that, are, that is coming out next month for, it's going to be Valentine's Day related, so, and also be sure to let me know which one your favorite is. I'm going to tell you what my favorite one is. This one, this one's my favorite. I think it's just because I've never worked with something that is like this, and 
I think this turned out a super adorable. But of course, you tell me which one your favorite one is. Here's just a few of them. I can't bring them all into the frame here, but I just have, we, we worked with this. Then we also did a cutting board and um and a shirt so i think that they all turned out super adorable but these are like my three favorite ones in this um video i have to say i like them for their own reason and i just think that yeah i i think they all turned out super cute all right thanks guys for watching again make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can see the all the other new videos that are coming to my channel bye